So I join the sewing group and I see every other post is why is my machine breaking thread or why is my machine bunching up? This is the most common things ever. Um, and there's many reasons. And this applies to industrial machines also, by the way. So um, I'm gonna show you on a vintage machine because it's a great cross between a more industrial machine because it is all metal and it does operate more like an industrial machine would with a pulley system. Um, and it's also a domestic machine. So let's get started. Okay, first thing, you have your thread. Is your thread garbage? Mostly I sew with polyester thread. Um, if your thread is cotton and it is more than a few years old, it very well may be garbage. So pull your thread. If you do this, a little bit of resistance and your thread just breaks, your thread is rotten. Throw your thread away. Very simple, okay? Next, same thing in your bobbin. Is the thread in your bobbin rotten? No? Okay, we're gonna move on to the next step. Is your machine threaded correctly? This machine and most vintage machines have a very simple um, and pretty standard way of threading. You go to whatever your first loop is from this, and it's usually up on top, the other machines are sometimes over here, anywhere, it doesn't matter. Through the first loop, we're gonna go, let me get this out. Okay, we're gonna go down, it's always down and up and into the hook. You could see it move into the hook. So that way, if you're holding this, you're gonna hold this thread down and you're gonna bounce this part. If this part is bouncing correctly, your spring, then you have your tension correctly in place, your resistance. If you have bypassed the spring and it's just dragging and it's not bouncing, when you hold this thread and you bounce it up and down, you did something wrong. Okay, now you can put it into this arm, should you choose to, and then go into here, or you can just bypass the arm and go straight into here. I'm not sure what the actual correct way is, but it makes no difference, except offers a slight bit more of resistance. Either way, once you get it through this top, it will bounce very slightly, okay? And then you're gonna go into whatever you have here. I'm pretty sure that every modern machine has one of these guys. Sometimes it has one more at the bottom. Sometimes it'll have one that's at the actual needle plate right here. So this one has one right over here and then we're going from left to right. That's the other thing. We're gonna go from left to right on this one. Most machines use a flat back needle, domestic machines. So see where your flat back is lining up, okay? So if I put this in and I, I unscrew this, the only way I could put this in is with the back against this part. So if you have a machine that has is forward facing needle, you're gonna be putting the needle right here and the flat back will lay against the machine. So it's pretty simple to figure out on a home machine where, which way your needle is facing, okay? Next, next. So we're in, we'll put our foot down, very simple. Your tension. Most tensions at domestic machine level is preset at four. That's kind of the standard. That's for pretty much anything you're going to do. If you are receiving, having a bunch of bunching, let's say we're gonna do, gonna do some sewing, and I'm using green on top and I'm using black on the bottom. Let's say you have a bunch of bunching, okay? So let's do an example. Take this out. We're going to check our bobbin now. Take our bobbin out. I'm sure you know how to take a bobbin out by now. Is our bobbin threaded correctly? The correct way to thread a bobbin is the way that it unwinds goes against the hook. If your hook is facing forward and your bobbin is unwinding towards you, that is correct. So when you shove it in and you go into the hook, it should easily slip in. If you go into, oh, I just ripped it. If you go into the same direction, it's gonna be more difficult to pop it in. So basically they're opposing each other, you see that? This is going to unwind in the direction of the hook so it's easy to grab, okay? 
got him in and he's gonna click into that little hole all right so we have that now your bobbin should offer some form of resistance if you have a lot of bunching on the bottom but you have a beautiful stitch on top your bobbin case might be loose so this little screw right over here and in some cases you will have a screw right in front uh, like in the case of the um, what is that called the wishbone um, bobbin case it has a screw right in front and I'm sure other ones do this little screw righty tighty lefty loosey so I would tighten it to my right and make sure that I have resistance as I pull this thread you also want it to, to pull very smoothly so if your thread is pulling smoothly with some resistance and this thread is pulling smoothly with your foot up with some resistance and nothing is getting caught your problem is most likely not tension you have additional issues to worry about but if you are not having any resistance if it's super loose and you're still winding this little screw and trying to tighten it up open this up and check in here right in that little hole sometimes if you're using a poor quality thread or you're using a thick thread or a fuzzy thread it's going to build up right there which is going to push this arm which is your pressure up so no matter how much you screw it it's going to have resistance and it's going to stay up and then automatically it's going to over loosen your thread so we've got to make sure that there's nothing in there if you're not having a proper amount of resistance as you tighten see it's giving me a good amount okay so this is perfect all right okay next your needle the thicker your fabric the thicker your needle however in most cases the needle itself is not going to cause bunching what's going to cause bunching is a bent needle so let's say that you just had an accident you hit something um, you went over something super thick and the needle couldn't get by and all of a sudden after that you start having a problem that's the time to check your needle your needle might be slightly bent even if you can't see it it is possible that you have a burr or a bent needle so that is a good time to check um, if that's the issue let's say you have checked all of this you've tried switching your stitches you've gone from the absolute smallest stitch to see if that helps I'm gonna go to number one we're going to our very longest stitch and nothing is helping our situation. We are having, oopsie, we have some lovely bunching right here. Oh, that's actually not bunching. That's just piece thread caught. But let's say we have bunching in the back and nothing is helping. You have done absolutely everything you are supposed to do. You can also check your presser foot. If your presser foot is too heavy, it might be getting the fabric stuck, which might cause it to bunch. It's not likely. Um, if your fabric is not moving, however, through, then your teeth may have dropped. If your teeth may have dropped, some of these have this thing right here, it's called a drop feed. So you can adjust your feed, you can raise your teeth or drop your teeth, but if that is not the case with your machine, your teeth may have actually physically dropped if it's not dragging it through. So that's an issue we'll go over later. But if you're moving through and you're continuously bunching and there's nothing else that you can do, you need to check your timing. Now, timing is a more complicated issue. But the way you check your timing, in the absolute easiest way, is if you hold your thread and you rotate by hand, does your machine pick up a thread on every single loop? We'll do it again. We'll go in, drop it down, and is it looping through? We pull it through, look. Did it get the black thread? It got the black thread. And we'll do this, especially with a zigzag. You wanna do this at every point of the zigzag to make sure that it's getting it. If it is skipping sometimes, or if you hear some strange noise, your timing may have blown. And this usually happens after going over something very, very thick. What we're going to do is we're going to check right in here. Take this all out. Take out your bobbin case. Take out anything that protects the hook, which is in this machine. So open all this up. Really zoom in. There's what needs to zoom in. So I guess the easiest way would be to tilt this baby back. Pull this. Okay, ready? Oh. Tilt this 
little guy all the way back. Okay, come to the other side, Roma, so you can hold the machine. Other side, honey. Okay, so my son has to hold this machine in place. Is it okay, hot? hold it. No, it's good. Hold it. Hold okay. it. You're not holding the machine, honey. You're not holding the machine. I am. I am. Look. You weren't a second ago. Oh, sorry. Okay. So right here, this little guy, where is he? Here. Where'd he go? There is our hook. Hold on. Where'd he go? Where? Oh, I have to get this thing out in order to see it. So any cover that you have, Sorry. Can you please hold the machine in place? There we go. Thank you, honey. Okay. Find the position. It's All right. To hold it in. I understand. All right. So this thing right there is the hook. If you can't find your hook when you're watching, sometimes the mechanism is right on top um, of the machine. So watch for the little thing. We'll just call it a little thing that loops behind your needle. Okay, so do you see this hook? So what you are looking for is, and you can take your threads out so they're not in the way. You are looking to see if your needle is deflecting, first of all, if your needle is being hit as the hook comes around. So sometimes if you have a bad situation the hook will literally hit the needle and that's going to cause your needle to immediately get bent every single time or break. This is not the case here. This is perfectly timed. The other thing is that the hook, as the needle is going up, you see how the hook is passing right over the eye? You see that? That is exactly what you want to see. That is going to take the thread and loop it every single time. Now, if you don't see that happening, you have a timing issue. And if you have a timing issue, the best thing to do is to send it to a professional. Um, if your professional charges more than $50 to do this, then I suggest do it yourself because if it's messed up anyway and you've confirmed that, actually try it yourself anyway, because if you've confirmed that it's messed up and you make it worse, who cares? He's just gonna have to fix it anyway, right? So, um, We'll do another video on how to time a machine, but those are the, the most common factors. And now on industrial machines, I do find that they have a tendency to um, be incredibly sensitive. So if you have a burr where the needle broke and hit the rotating mechanism, or if you have um, a clog, like sometimes when we sew lingerie, lace gets stuck in the machine. And you would think that these machines are so heavy duty that that would never shift anything the slightest shift will make a huge difference because they're operating on such a high speed that any tiny difference anything slightly off will blow your especially on zigzag machines will blow your will will change the, the the take up of the thread so it'll cause it to continuously break so if you're operating an industrial machine and you have constant thread breakage and you have loosened your tension on both ends and then slightly tightened until you get it to a perfect position but you still can't seem to get the machine to sew correctly then you probably have a timing issue um, so yeah those are my two cents and I hope that you follow my next video on how to time these machines because it's relatively basic thank you